There's a ton of small shortcuts that I use on a Mac that together make a huge difference. And anyone can set this up for free using the Shortcuts app without needing to know how to code. In fact, you can even download all these shortcuts using the links down below. But the thing is, there's no point in even having these shortcuts if you can't trigger them easily. Because there are tons of ways to do it, but some are much faster than others. The slowest way is to open the Shortcuts app and manually click on the shortcut. An easier way is to add shortcuts to the dock by right-clicking on a shortcut and selecting Add to Dock. But this stops making sense as you add more and more. Another option would be to add them as a widget to the desktop. And because these widgets are interactive, you can trigger your shortcuts by just clicking on them. A step up from that, and what many people do, is to add them to the menu bar. And to do that, you just drag and drop a shortcut into the menu bar folder on the sidebar. And now you're going to see a shortcuts icon in your menu bar that will display every shortcut you added to that folder. This is better because it gives you easy access to multiple shortcuts without taking too much space. But an even faster way is to toggle them via the spotlight search. This is almost perfect and definitely good enough for most people. The only small problem is that you can't tell Spotlight to only search for shortcuts, so it will index everything else it thinks you might want. And this brings us to my favorite way, which is by using Alfred or Raycast. I use Alfred, which has a workflow for shortcuts. So if I type SC, it knows to only search for shortcuts. Raycast can do this for free, while Alfred requires a one-time payment. And there's an even faster way than this, which is to bind individual shortcuts to your keyboard. But I don't use any of these often enough for that to make sense. All right, so let's now go over my shortcuts. So you know when a meeting gets added to your calendar and when it's time to join, all you have to do is click the link? There's a shortcut that will do that for you. And the way it works is that it'll search your calendar for upcoming video calls and automatically join the next one. But there's a few things I do every time before I hop on a meeting. So before I join, I run this other shortcut that stops any music playing, turns on Do Not Disturb, and opens Hand Mirror, which is a free menu bar app that lets me check my camera to make sure I look presentable. And if I know that my call will likely end up in me sharing my screen, I also run this simple shortcut that hides everything on my desktop. Okay, so depending on what I'm doing, I'm gonna use different apps and settings. And to make this easier, I assign the shortcut for each setup. So when I want to listen to an audiobook, I trigger a shortcut that opens Audible on one side and my note-taking app on the other. For work, I have one that opens VS Code, iTerm2, and YouTube Music. And by the way, you can decide where on the screen you want each app to open, or if you have more than one monitor, which one to use. And when I go to my local coffee shop to write my monthly newsletter, I have another one that opens my Substack dashboard, turns on Do Not Disturb, sets the brightness all the way up, and connects to my home VPN. And sometimes I find myself all tabbing between two random apps, and when that happens, I run this other shortcut that automatically tiles the last two open windows. Okay, so when I'm sharing a link to someone, especially Amazon links, the URL is just too long. And to get around that, I have this shortcut that I trigger when I copy the link so that it converts it into a shorter version. Very useful. All right, so the Mac has a feature to automatically empty the trash can after a certain amount of days. And I wish it had that same feature for emptying the downloads folder. But thankfully, there's a shortcut for it. And when you trigger it, it deletes every item in your downloads folder based on the parameters you choose. For me, I set it to delete items older than seven days. And if you change this value here to 20D, it'll delete items older than 20 days. 1M for one month, etc. And I'll show you how to have this run automatically later in the video. I also use shortcuts all the time to control the lights in my home. In the past, I relied on apps like Hue Menu to do this from the menu bar, but it's so much easier to use shortcuts and trigger them directly from the spotlight. For instance, I have a few shortcuts set up for different scenes in my studio, my office, and pretty much everywhere else in the house. And when I'm done for the day, I use a simple shortcut to shut down my Mac and turn off the lights in the office. And this is the type of shortcut I like the most because I activate it almost the same way as I would to normally shut down the Mac. I just type SC before it. Another shortcut that's just like that is this one that FaceTimes my family. I'm very close to them, so this gets a ton of views. All right, so just the other day, I lost a ton of work because Final Cut crashed and didn't save my progress. Normally that's fine because that's what Time Machine is for, but the problem with that is that the fastest backup frequency you can choose is every hour so I could only recover the work I had done up to an hour before. 
So now when I'm working locally, like editing my videos, I've gotten into the habit of running a shortcut that triggers a time machine backup every time I make significant progress. And speaking of my videos, I always try to say the most that I can in the least amount of words. So when I'm scripting, I use a shortcut that tells me how long it'll take to read a certain block of text. I just copy the text, trigger the shortcut, and it calculates the reading time. And this shortcut comes with a setting to adjust the reading speed based on how many words you read per minute. For me, that's around 200, which is a bit above average as I tend to speak on the faster side. And when I'm thinking of titles for my videos, I use a similar shortcut that counts characters, so I can make sure I always stay under 50. I also use the shortcut that gives me a bunch of information about my network, like my IP address, and lets me run a speed test straight from it. And if you want a shortcut to learning new skills, a great place to do that is by using today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives where you can take thousands of classes led by industry experts across programming, productivity, entrepreneurship, and more. This summer, I'm trying to take the production on my channel to the next level. And the class that really helped me with that was from one of my all-time favorite YouTubers, MKBHD, where he went over everything that goes into one of his videos, from scripting and planning to filming and editing. Skillshare also offers learning paths, which are hand-picked classes that are meant to be taken in order, and they build on one another to help you master a specific skill. If you're also thinking about picking up a new skill this summer, then check out the link in the description and the first 500 people will also receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. And a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Alright, so all these shortcuts that we just went over so far have to be manually triggered. But we can also create automations, which are essentially shortcuts that trigger themselves. I'm a big fan of automations on the iPhone, but it's a little trickier on the Mac, because unlike the iPhone, the Mac does not have an automations tab in the shortcuts app. It's probably coming soon, but for now, there are two options. The first is an app called Shottery. And it works very similarly to the automations tab on the iPhone. First, we need a trigger, which is what needs to happen for a certain shortcut to run. So let's say we want to create an automation to run a shortcut every time we open a certain app. And to keep things simple, let's say we want our work focus mode to be turned on every time we open Notion. To set this up, we're going to leave the trigger type as application, and under shortcut, we're going to select the one that activates the work focus mode. Then, under Applications, we're going to choose Notion. And we want this to be triggered when we open the app, so we're going to choose Activated. So now, when we open Notion, our Work Focus Mode will automatically turn on. But we also want it to get turned off when we close Notion. So we can create a second automation, and this time, we need to choose the shortcut that turns off the Work Focus Mode, and then, at the bottom, we're going to choose Quit. Now, every time we open up Notion, our work focus mode gets turned on and gets turned back off when we close it. There's a huge amount of automations you can set up with Shottery, but it only lets you use three trigger types for free. If you want to use all of them, you have to pay $10 a year, which isn't much, but it's still yet another subscription. There is an alternative called Trippa, which does have many of the same features. I actually paid for Trippa just before making this video so I can give you my thoughts on it. So if we wanted to make the same automation here on Trippa, we would add a trigger, then press App, select Notion, and we want it to trigger when it's connected. And lastly, we're going to choose our shortcut here, and now we have the same automation running on Trippa and on Shortery. And as you can see, it's very similar to Shortery, and it even has a few extra features. There's also a free version of Trippa that only lets you do one trigger, but you can use it to try it out before you buy it. I still prefer Shortery, but this comes pretty close. Either way, I'm not really into automations on the Mac. I think they make a ton of sense on the phone, because shortcuts aren't as easy to trigger on the phone as they are on the Mac. But I think this is the point where we hit diminishing returns. Sure, you can probably shave off a few more seconds here and there, but for me, I'm not a big enough power user for this to move the needle. The only automation I have on the Mac is for the shortcut I went over before that cleans up my downloads folder. And I have it so that it does it every day at 11 p.m. You can easily do this with Trippa's free plan, or you can do it with a cron job, which is way, way out of the scope of this video. Alright, so unfortunately, good Mac shortcuts are way harder to find than iOS ones. But there's still places where you can look. The obvious one is the gallery on the shortcuts app. And this is where I got the one that starts my next meeting, which I then modified to fit my needs, as well as the one that tiles my last two windows. 
There are also websites that aggregate thousands of shortcuts like Routine Hub, which is the most popular shortcut database. There's also Matthew Casanelli's website, as well as a few others that I've linked to in the description. But to be honest, I just added mine over time. Whenever I noticed I was doing something repetitive, I would then create a shortcut to do it faster. And you don't have to create anything fancy. Usually the best shortcuts are the simple ones that you end up using multiple times a day. And since good shortcuts are so hard to find, I'd love to hear which ones you're using. The real time savers though are iOS shortcuts. These are the ones that make a serious difference and it's what got me into shortcuts in the first place. And I went over my favorite ones in this video here. So I'll see you there.